yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, okay. Uh, hello all and welcome to the IPFS Weekly. It is March the 16th. Uh, it's really nice to see all your faces. Uh, today we have Terminal uh, and they're going to tell us how to uh, build and deploy uh, IPFS hosted apps using Terminal. Um, and I'm super excited to have you guys here. Uh, would you like to share your screen and take it away guys? Yeah, okay. Here, do you want to say a couple words or should I just kick it off? You could just kick it off. Cool. Yeah, I'll share my screen. Okay. Uh, so, hi, I'm Brett Shear. I'm the COO and co founder of Terminal. We also have Harrison, our CEO, and Janison, our CTO, on the call today. Uh, so, this is the Terminal app. We're I'm logged in right now into an account. Uh, I already have a few sites deployed. Terminal, in essence, is a web development, modern web development tool to deploy sites and apps onto IPFS. Uh, so the main things we've released in this first version will definitely are definitely around hosting the app, the hosting aspect, as well as pointing domains. So I'll walk through both fairly quickly today. The first thing is is just deploying the app. So it happens in a few very quick steps. Uh, so first you just connect your GitHub. I've already connected mine. When you do connect it, it lets you configure whichever account you'd like to and within an account, certain repos if you want. Um, so I'll just hop over to my GitHub and select a repo that has an app that I built recently. Um, so I'll select that repo and then as soon as you do that, that's, that's the code that I want to deploy, right? And then over on this third step is where you can set your build settings um, and click deploy. It already reads the package JSON and fills in the build command and publish directory for you. Uh, so that's what it did right here. And then in addition, you can set advanced settings if you have environment variables with your deployment or also Docker images. The Docker image aspect is something that is not usually even available in other kind of modern web development tools, even without the centralized aspects. Um, because we use Docker images in the back end to build the repo when we deploy it on type before we deploy it onto IPFS, we actually expose this endpoint so you can specify any Docker image to support any type of configuration you might have depending on the framework or the back end or language, et cetera, that you might use. In this case, I don't have any crazy specific thing. And a lot of the frameworks are already supported out of the box with uh, kind of generic Docker images that we have. There's more documentation in the tech docs as well to talk about like common frameworks to deploy and which tech docs to use. So then you just click deploy and that's really it. Three quick steps and the, it's already deploying. Um, so here is where you can just monitor how that deployment is going. You see the logs of the deployment flow. I think this, re this uh, site in particular will take around two to three minutes to, to deploy. Um, so... I can hop over to a site I just deployed sort of recently to show the logs. Um, so yeah, this is one that's already deployed. I'll go into the deployment specific page and here we are. So what it's basically doing is it's pulling your files from GitHub, downloading the repo, um, using Docker images to build it. If you specify that Docker image, we will use that one in particular. Going through the standard yarn npm build process. Uh, and then once it's done, we upload the deployed files to IPFS, return back hash, create a terminal subdomain to then point to that hash. And from there, you can visit your site on IPFS. Pretty loads, pretty performant. I mean, very performant because, and, th and this is a site that, well, not to give myself a shout out, but a crypto art newsletter that I've been working on. But um, essentially, the reason why it's so performant on the site um, right now is we do, we do a few things. Uh, we are running our, our own notes. We also are using additional service providers to pen Kenyatta, Temporal. They might be on the call as well. I think I saw Matt on here. Um, and so for like additional redundancy, but we upload the files, the same gateway that we request 
through that. We point the domain to when we request when we request the uh, the the files from the domain, and that is like creates like a very low like propagation time for us. Um, and then we also, as soon as it's done deploying, we make a request through that domain to immediately put those files into cache. The cache that it's going into is a CDN that we we are using on top of IPFS at the moment. It is like just a CDN provider, like a one that you would use on a front end website, a content delivery you have today. Um, although we are very excited about what we are working on and for a future release where we will have our own IPFS based CDN. Um, and it'll be completely IPFS based and peer to peer. And we think more performant, better cost, et cetera. So we're, we're really excited about that one and that will definitely be a major release. Um, other than, other than the deployment process and the site is on IPFS, it has an SSL cert automatically given to it. The next thing you can really do is set up your domain. Um, so on this one, I, I added a, a C name, I mean, a subdomain really quickly, but you can add, you can purchase domains. You can also um, add an external or existing subdomain or root domain, however you please. And the, and the process of, Pointing it is a is a simple uh, C C name record or an A name record depending on if it's a subdomain or root domain. So I can just like I can just show you um, if you have. So this one is already taken. If 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 it's not taken, I can just purchase it. Uh, but if it is taken, you can just add it. It'll say is this yours. Pretty simple flow. I might already have this one added on a different site. I'll just add this one. So then from there, it'll just go directly into your domain settings. Uh, and you can click on the check DNS configuration. It gives you instructions on how to point it from your external DNS provider. If you purchase it through terminal, we do become the DNS provider in that case, and then um, it's automatically configured. Once you configure the site, we automatically create a SSL cert for you. We generate it from Let's Encrypt and put it on that site for you. I think I have an example of that as well, right here. This is the actual site. So my site, the Crypto Art Digest site, is hosted using terminal um, on IPFS. And yeah, that's the Let's Encrypt cert that gets generated. So that's pretty much the main release we have out now. And yeah, I mean, we are working on a bunch of really exciting stuff um, coming forward. I think that pretty much brings us to the end of the demo. If there's any questions, we're definitely happy to answer any that there might be. Brad, thank you very much, Brad. If anyone has any questions, we'd like to put it in the chat or shout them out uh, either way. I saw that uh, ENS domains was uh, was in there coming soon. Yeah, that is it is coming soon. We think we can make it a, a seamless experience to, to connect. Nice. Uh, so Jessica just says, who's your domain registrar? <laughs> uh, right now we're, we're using just uh, GoDaddy domains. Yeah, but we but also with ENS, of course, is an option and then uh, coming soon and we are looking at some other like decentralized, uh, more decentralized domain services out there that are options, um, just kind of waiting for the for the user experience to be uh, a bit bit easier for that user. Does, is there a way to like import my site from a or existing, like if I've already got a site somewhere on IPFS and just be like, this is the hash. Can you start hosting this for me? Yeah, good point. We've gotten that requested. Uh, um, from the onboardings, we are going to have it uh, like so. We're going to create a CLI. So right now, you saw the GitHub, uh, you know, connect your GitHub as a Git provider. Um, we're we're going to pretty quickly add like GitLab as well as a CLI, and the CLI will have commands like more granular commands to just upload um, 
a hash in particular and deploy with a hash. Okay, so Lido says, is DNS link set up for default domains automatically? Do you know what DNS link is? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Janice, you want to take that one? I, I think you're. Yeah, they are, they are set up automatically and they're updated every time the build happens. Nice. Any other questions? Well, if you don't have any questions on here, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can always DM us on our Twitter account. We're pretty responsive there. And you can also just email um, me directly, brett at terminal.co. Um, and yeah, we also have a community Slack channel if you want to join. Um, it's on our site, just community at the top of terminal.co. And there's some people in there that are working, on, that are trying out the product, testing it out, um, using it in production even and giving a bunch of feedback and just kind of sharing ideas about features and um, how to, what to use it for. So uh, please, please come and join and we're happy to answer more questions there too. How was the experience setting up SSL using Let's Encrypt specifically for IPFS as that typically lives on like a server and you know, with Nginx and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so th there's two parts to that. One is for the default domains. <clears throat> we're using Cloudflare as a, you know, as a proxy pretty much. And we have a wildcard cert there. And since it's all subdomains on the default domain, the wildcard cert works fine on all the newly provisioned sites. Then regards to custom domains there, we do have a proxy. We have a HA proxy um, that basically um, every time you add a custom domain, we verify the domain we generate the cert for you. Um, we verify it because we, we get you to point to it first. So you, you add a CNAME or a record from your custom domain to our proxy. So as soon as you do that, we're able to use CertBot to automatically generate the certificate using the ACME challenge. Um, and then uh, we're pretty much using that as a SSL for SAS there. So that's the two ways we handle SSL. Thanks, Brett. Cool. Nice. All right. Any any other last minute questions? I mean, we have plenty of time, so I think this is a really cool product. I'm excited. You, when's your um when's your estimated kind of launch for for it? The product's live now, so um people who just request early access, we kind of are just onboarding yeah. a dozen or, or so a day. Um, so we might publicly just open it up to everyone in the next few weeks um, or in conjunction with kind of the uh, next version, which includes the CDN uh, and some other cool features. So um, we're still, uh, deciding on that but if anyone wants to use it now they could reach out to us or request early access on the website and they'll be in in the next probably uh few days or a week max yeah usually we've been making people sit through the demo in person but since everyone on here has already seen it we'll just send you direct access to sign up if you ping us nice all right Lado. Uh, sort of like a tangential question um, around uh, GitHub integration. Uh, would it be possible to grant, like, my understanding is that you, you just need to read only access to a specific repo, uh, not to like entire account. Would that be possible? Was that your experience? Or are there any limitations with the APIs that you have available? Yeah, no, it were, you can grant it to specific repos within an account. Cool. All right. Well, 
if there's no other questions, then I guess we'll finish a little bit early today. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming on to tell us about Terminal. Uh, it's a really slick product, um, and I hope I hope that loads of people start using it to deploy their websites because uh, uh, it looks good and it seems to work really well. It looks it looks like something that I just go and uh, and and log onto the internet and be like this is where I want to put my site and then everything I expect is just already there and ready and like, you know, slick and, and just works well. <laughs> and like it, it just, it looks, it looks really great. And I think that like, I hope that um, you guys are successful with it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. And our, our goal is to not just provide this for hosting, but to essentially provide like a Firebase type experience with all the different things you would need for your app or site, but leveraging like IPFS as the backbone underneath to deliver those things such as databases or a CDN or hosting or serverless functions. So um, a lot on the roadmap, uh, definitely trying to align it with the IPFS roadmap. Uh, and so we're excited to release some of those new add-on features in the next few months. Yeah, and I'll add that the experience has been great for us. We use the app for our, our own products. Um, we use Terminal Host, our app, and our docs, and our blog. Um, the blog has a bunch of cool tutorials already, depending on whatever framework you're using. We're adding a bunch more. Um, and I use it for a personal site I had, and the experience has been great. Like the automatic deployments is definitely uh, a nice feature where every time you push a new uh, you know, a new PR, new merge to your repo that it automatically deploys and you can just see them right there and go check out the new, the new build. So the experience is definitely smooth. Um, would, would, uh, recommend checking it out. Yeah. And I'd say as a last thing, our, our goal isn't just to just put the sites or different aspects on IPFS. We're really working towards figuring out ways in which IPFS can make your site or app faster, more performant, more secure. Um, and so those are the, the super exciting things. So it really should be that uh, hopefully in a few months that hosting a site or an app uh, using uh, IPFS would make it a lot faster or cheaper than just using something like Netlify or uh, normal hosting so some work to do but uh it seems like uh it's, it's possible so that's what we're working towards nice what made you choose ipfs i would say uh we've been in the web3 space for a while um and we're working a lot on uh ethereum and and dApps and it just sort of uh started a, a rabbit hole down like what is a dap and, and um you know does a dap require smart contracts could it be a dap if it doesn't have smart contracts and really just thinking about the web and how web3 might actually happen and um what pieces of the web like the web stack um are going to need to be distributed or decentralized in order to make that happen. And we kind of just felt like uh, IPFS was a very like good backbone for a Web3. Um, it doesn't have a token, which makes it very easy to natively integrate into the web. Uh, and we think most of the services that people do need for a website or apps um, could be built uh, using IPFS as a backbone. Um, so we've just been really impressed with uh, the progress and the IPFS community and we felt that uh, there wasn't enough people building uh, given how big of an impact it could have on the web. So we decided we'd like to help make that happen. Nice. Right on. All right. Um, Okay, cool. Well, um, that just about wraps it up, I guess, for this week. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, it's really nice uh, of you guys to come and talk to us about Terminal. Thank you again. Um, and 
we'll see you next uh, next week. Um, and I think we're going to be talking to. I think we're going to be talking to Microsoft. Exciting times. Um, so anyway, see you next week, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Having us.